crossover. And it's part of the collector, but there's also a man there he was giving really descended vibes. Like, it's an earthbound spirit, but he's descended as in he's very low in vibration. And do we know or do you know if a man, like an adult man, like died there? Yes. The man that did made the puppets. Oh, from okay. What I, from what I understand, he did die there and they had his funeral there. Hi everybody, today we have a special guest who will be sharing some of their paranormal uh, experiences with us and hopefully I will also be able to add additional information to help explain the situation. Um, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium, so hi! But I felt like this would be a good change from the usual videos while also giving a voice and support to someone who has experienced and or is still continuing to experience paranormal phenomenon. So, um, if you would like to introduce yourself by providing your name and what you do for a living or any other additional information you'd like to add, go right ahead. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm Jennifer Reeves and I'm just a regular everyday person. Um, you know, I have a fascination with paranormal. I have since I was a kid. Um, I'm a wife and a GG. And during the day, I take care of my little granddaughter. And at night, I take care of my husband and my dogs. And then, you know, when I have time at night, too, I'll go do some little ghost hunting or try to get into some paranormal mischief. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, and I love going to places. I mean, it's just like the creepier, the better to me. I love it. So. So what got you interested in the paranormal? Was there, like, a certain, like, situation that happened? that just got you interested? Well, I always watched scary movies with my dad, you know, so I guess it was just that and watching vampires and, you know, just, any, I, I don't know, I just have grown up watching that kind of stuff. But one thing that, and I don't know if this is paranormal, but my grandmother had this room and uh, she had these, it still creeps me out to think about the little knights in armor, but they were tall as me. Like I was about maybe seven, eight years old. So they were small. But those things creeped me out. But for some reason, every time I'd go through that room to go outside, I would stop and stand in front of them and look at them. Like, I don't know why, you know, and nothing ever happened that, I mean, I recall, but it was just like the weirdest, you know, why would I stop and stare into something that creeped me out, you know? <laughs> but I mean, I don't know, but that's really like the first mm -hmm. experience of anything like, you know, I had. So I don't know. That's interesting. Like, I don't know. She sounds like a grandma that I would really like because that's oh. the shit that I like. <laughs> she was cool. Her birthday was Halloween. So. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Honey. yeah, I loved her. She was awesome. <laughs> All right. So, so you were like about the age of seven and you, and that's when you felt like a little, ooh, that's a little creepy. Like those kinds of vibes with those, um, I guess the nights, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, I just, I don't, I mean, even now I can still just feel the, the feeling they gave me. It was just, uh, ugh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, you couldn't see anything because you know, it was black in there, but I don't know. Yeah. So, but there was one in particular, like she had one on this side of the couch, one on this side, but it was always this one. Mm -hmm. It was always the first one. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> just weird, but. It makes me wonder, like, if, were they like brand new or was it something like she got like second hand? Now that I'm not sure about. Yeah. Really. She probably got it second hand most likely though, I would say. Probably. Yeah, because I'm wondering like if maybe there was something attached to the one and you were picking that up. Because I'm trying to I see think. if I'm seeing anything with it. And I can feel like some residual energy with it. So I'm wondering if that's what you were picking up. Because I know, like, um, even if it was just, like, a normal store and they were just selling decorations, you know, like a Target or some shit, even though 
you know, it's brand new. Um, being in a location like a store still collects residual energy over time. Mm -hmm. But it's different versus like being in someone's house for a long time. Because there's different types of energies that, you know, are involved. But if she got it like second hand, it probably was like in a castle. <laughs> See, like, I mean, it could have been. Like I said, you know, that's, I mean, I would get, I don't think she'd have bought it new, but I, I, I don't know, I've never really asked, but hmm. there was something to it. Yeah, that's so weird, but interesting. Did you have, or have you had any other paranormal experiences like growing up? Well, uh, yeah. Well, this was years. I mean, I was grown and had kids um, after my first divorce. I moved in with the guy I was with at the time. Now, he, he told me before I moved in that an old lady used to live there. She died in the house. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. You know, it wasn't really worth I got her bedroom, of course. You know, I, I would get the old lady's bedroom, you know, but that's fine. And really nothing happened at first. But then, like, it got to where we'd sit at the dining room table and you could hear her walking. And you could feel the breeze as if somebody was like walking by. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. okay, that's a little, and that was before I really got into it like, you know, like this, but I'm like, okay, that's a little weird, you know? Um, and we would hear little things and noises. And then one day we had all four kids, my two and his two, had the radio on acting fools. And the, the curtain in the, the living room was one of those big baby windows. The thing just fell down, like something jerked it down. And we're all like, okay, she must not, she wants it quiet. Um, and then, you know, this this is probably the craziest thing that happened. You remember, you may remember, there's pictures years ago. I had the little angels, and they were posed like this. Yeah. Okay, I had one on each side of the window in my bedroom, which was her bedroom. My boyfriend, at the time, his son needed a pencil or some crap for school. So I said, come on, go with me back there, and we'll get a pencil. Girl, when I walked in that room, those angel pictures were upside down. Ooh. Oh. And he even noticed it. And he was just a kid. He's like, oh, my God. You know, we just stood there looking at it like. And then I flipped him back up. That never happened again. But I know I didn't turn him upside down. Yeah. And then the only other thing that happened there. And this is creepy. Um, I worked for a. We did private investigations and background checks. And I had the little recorder, you know, like you do EVPs. And, you know, had kids were playing with it. And we were just letting them play. Well, when they went to bed. We turned it on to see what all they were saying. And you could hear them just laughing. But in the background, there was a voice. And it's saying something like, don't do it, Daddy. And we both wigged out like, what in the world is that? And we played it over and over. And it's like a kid. Please don't do it, Daddy. And I'm like, you know. So I moved out. I didn't stay there long. But um, other than, but nothing bad like ever happened to us or anything. Just those few little weird. Oh, oh, I did forget one. I'm sorry. Girl, I got a story. Oh, um, and then one day I came in from work and nobody was there. It was just me. And I was going to lay across the bed and take a little nap. Whew, I laid on my stomach. And just a couple of minutes later, seconds later, I felt a hand, like somebody put a hand on my shoulder. I'm like, okay. Needless to say, I didn't take a nap. You know, I got up. <laughs> but it didn't feel bad, though. Like, it didn't feel like anything was going to hurt me. But mm -hmm. it was still a little, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to talk about that house you were with the angel like statues and things mm -hmm. because the first thing i'm picking up is obviously an earthbound i don't see anything like demonic or anything um and yeah it's definitely an earthbound spirit and she died in that house so that makes sense um and it feels as though you know how like you have older generations of people that it's kind of like their way or the highway and they don't like change. Mm -hmm. That's her. She, yeah, I, I can see that. She's like, these people are in my house and they're <laughs> doing these things that I don't like. And so she's messing with you, essentially. That's what it seems like. Yeah. She, she was trying to make it like she was worse than she really was. She was trying to give that appearance of like demonic because you think like with the demonic stuff they flip the crosses upside down and mm -hmm. they yeah that's what she was trying to do it was just well, it worked yeah <laughs> <laughs> laugh out i thought oh my god yeah yep yep she's just an old uh -huh. bitch <laughs> i mean i guess she had to be but it was it was weird and then mm -hmm. 
Let's see, after that, uh, gosh, I don't really remember too much happening in the last, with my ex, my second ex-husband. Girl, I'm married three times, so, when, and now I refer to my second ex-husband as Satan, so if there's any stories with him, that's who I'm talking about. <laughs> but, um, I don't really remember anything happening with him either, really. Well, no, there's one little thing that happened, I'll tell that. We had moved into this apartment, and he, he drank a lot. And yeah. we both did. But uh, he was gone one night, you know, and I was just laying in the bed. And the way the bedroom was, it faced the living room where you come in the front door. I had my kitchen light on. And I was laying there, and I heard the front door open. I thought I did. And I looked, and I see a shadow go across the wall in the living room. And I'm like, hey, babe, you know, is that you? And he didn't answer. And I got up, and I went, look, nobody was there. Mm-hmm. You know, but that was the only thing I had ever seen there. But, I mean, there was a shadow from somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that I, place was a little bit weird though because I think something really bad happened in that apartment. I'm not 100% sure, but the landlord told us just bits and pieces of who you lived there, why they moved out. But I feel like something did happen there, but we didn't really have any other, you know, experiences though. Yeah. Well, so I'm seeing an attachment with him. Um, and then. Because he had that attachment, uh, it looks like that there is something in that apartment, but I'm trying to see exactly what it is. It's very, like, it. it's giving the non-human vibe, but just because it's non-human doesn't mean it's demonic. It's just, it's giving that non-human vibe, and it's just negative. And I honestly think it's because of... You said it was an was an ap- uh, an apartment, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it the kind that like it's a building and then you have many apartments within that building? Well, yeah. What it was, it was a building. It was a business, and then the business owner lived there, and oh. then there were three apartments attached on the back. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's because that thing is associated with all of the energy f- within that space. And that's the tough thing with living in apartments because you're getting the energies from everybody that lives there. And it's hard to even do cleansings that last very long. It's very similar to the issues I have living in a twin because technically I can only cleanse my half of the house. And then the other half is like, well, it doesn't get touched because I don't live there. And so when you... I was going to say, when you live in apartments and then you have multiple people, it's like you're getting all their shit, like all their energy, all their residual energy. If they have any attachments, um, any thought forms, which I found that especially in the bigger apartment complexes, there tend to be some thought forms because of that energy is so dense that it becomes something else. And that's kind of the vibe here with that apartment that you lived at so that's why it kind of like went through the door and it's actually a common thing too when you have any like kind of haunting in a house or an apartment it's like you hear the door open when it really didn't open and that has to do with like the energy and the energetic vibration of the entity coming into your space and sometimes you'll hear knocks and if you hear disembodied knocks do not open the door <laughs> well you know you just reminded me i said that was the only thing but it wasn't um now i don't know why i saw this or how i saw this but i was sitting in the living room one night and i something just out of the corner of my eye caught my attention and in the carpet or what it looked like was like a smoke coming from the carpet or a fog mm-hmm. and in it i saw two like silhouettes like fighting like two men and then i saw one draw a hand back like this like with something you know and mm-hmm. i don't know why i would have seen that you know that was really weird and then um i was taking it getting it, getting a shower one day and the shower curtain i was leaning putting a towel up over it and it got jerked down so i fell over in the tub and then the only, I can't believe I forgot about this, but then my nephew came one day and he was young. Like he was probably seven or eight at the time. My aunt brought him and my kids by and my nephew wouldn't come in. He stood at the top steps and I said, what's wrong? He said, you don't hear that woman screaming? Yeah. And I said, no, baby, I don't. And he said, she's in a wedding dress. And the weird thing was the business was a wedding in formal world type 
Oh, I just got the chills. <laughs> yeah. And I can't believe I forgot that. So, and then maybe with me and him drinking, that may have what, you know, fighting and everything too might have. Mm-hmm. But I forgot about that. But to see in the, um, the, in the carpet, I don't know what that was. Yeah. That was, I've never seen anything like that since. Yeah. It's giving energetic imprint vibes. And you can see it. And I'm seeing like within your family line, you guys have some extrasensory abilities. And, ooh, I'm getting chills again. So you have the potential, and I'm pretty sure if you worked on that, you could increase that skill set and be able to see more and experience more than you already have. Um, but it makes sense. Like, first of all, like children typically see that kind of stuff anyway. But in terms of like the fighting, or like you see a man about to like mm-hmm. punch another that's giving like energetic imprint um someone died i feel like somebody died in that like i don't know if they i do too i really i felt like that because of the story that she told me um you know the story was that her nephew and niece or her niece and her son lived there when and uh something happened he got in trouble and she I don't know what happened to her. They just moved out is what she told me. He got in some kind of trouble, went to prison, and that was it. So as we were getting ready to move out, she was telling me that her nephew had gotten out of prison and was moving back in. So I'm wondering if he didn't do something to his mom or something. I mean, that's what I was thinking, but I never asked any questions because, I, I, was, you know, we yeah. moved out. <laughs> but, you know, it was a weird place for sure. So I don't know. And two, you know, when you have people that – pass away like if they have certain things on their minds like let's say you had a bride that was supposed to get married but she died before then i mean it would make sense that she'd show up around there especially if they like were in that business and like in the wedding business but it's just weird that i still feel like somebody died and i feel like yeah, somebody died in one of those apartments, but I don't think it has to do with the, him seeing the the lady in the wedding dress. I think she was someone that was supposed to get married, and because that was on her mind, kind of before she died, she showed up there. Which I don't okay. think I don't think she died there. I think she died wherever she died, and then um, she just shows up there because she was supposed to get married and she didn't get to do that. So okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, and then let me see. The children, when you were talking about them picking that, like the child voice on the spirit box, uh-huh. that's yeah. also giving energetic imprint. I mean, it's possible to have children that don't cross over. However, it's very rare, especially like the younger the child, the rarer it is for them not to cross over because typically angels are there waiting for them and it also goes by like their age of understanding too. So if they're like, I would say around seven, seven to 10 years old, that's kind of like their when their age of understanding kind of kicks in they know right from wrong and all that stuff but i typically don't see children below the ages of like 10 usually there's angels there to grab them and make sure you know they're okay yeah but there are like extreme cases like where you have collectors and they will prevent souls from crossing over because they collect them and they feed off of their energy. And I can see that being one reason as to want a reason. A little bit. I can see that being a reason as to why a child wouldn't be able to cross over. But okay. most of the time, when you pick up like children and like um, EVP sessions or whatever. And when you're doing an investigation, most of the time it's energetic imprints. But so that's okay. that's what I feel like you picked up was an energetic imprint. But also, like, time isn't linear. Everything is stacked on top of each other. So, you know, it's 
in your case, it's definitely an energetic imprint, but I'm just saying, like, it's possible that because there is no, like, linear form of time and everything's stacked, you could just tap into that. And I think sometimes when you have radios and frequencies like that, you can tap into that. Yeah, I do too. Because I've got um, a video that my friend and I went to a cemetery out here. I had found, and uh, we were standing on a grave looking at, there was a picture of the gentleman, his grave that it was, and I was like, well, he looked like a sweet old man, you know, and he did it like he'd been just the sweetest little thing. We were talking about him, so we were walking off, and she's talking about her brother, and in the background, you can hear a deep voice say, hey, a man, <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, maybe it was him. Um, I thought that was kind of neat, but that, yeah, I, I don't know, it, it, it was creepy, though, for a kid to be like, don't do it, daddy, like, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't know anybody that lived there other than the old lady that I was told about. So I really, I don't know. I don't even know if the place is still there, but I'd like to go look now and find out. Mm -hmm. Typically, too, when you have energetic imprints, especially with children, it's like the ones that leave behind the most energy. So like trauma situations yeah. um, tend to be picked up more than pretty much anything else. And that's kind of what it's giving. It's like, don't, it's giving like, don't hit me vibes. Like, yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of, I mean, I can see that. Yeah, I could see that being a, a situation the way it sounded. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hmm, that's so strange. And then in terms of like going to the cemetery with like a spirit box or like an EVP thing, um, so what happens is, when you do any kind of like spirit box or investigation with those, um, whatchamacallit, oh my god, I can't think of the word. <laughs> those types of like equipment yeah. stuff. Like, like, yeah, like the little um, yeah. spirit box and the apps. On, I use the apps on the phone. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people don't think, you know, girl, those, I mean, they're plum freaky sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I notice yeah. sometimes they're very accurate and sometimes yes. they're not. Yeah. But when you're using that type of equipment in a cemetery or just anywhere, it's kind of like sending out a beacon to anything and everything that's around. So it doesn't feel like it was that specific guy that was there. It's like getting whatever was around at the time because they wanted to speak and they saw that opportunity and they're like, oh shit, yeah, now I can finally be heard. But it's not feeling like that guy. It just, it's feeling like, I mean, it feels like a man, but it's not that man. Well, I got called an ugly name that day too. Uh, yeah. Because uh, we were doing the, um, I think we were doing Necrophonic, the phone app. Yeah. And one of, and it was a, well, I won't say what kind of cemetery it was, but anyway, the gentleman come through and said he wanted beer. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm sorry. You know, I don't have any beer. And he called me an ugly word. And I'm like, really? <laughs> but it's weird because, you know, we were asking, like, tell them what color our shirts were. And they told us, I mean, bam. But, you know, I got all that on video. And it was crazy. But that one dude wasn't happy with me. Yeah. I think he he was an alcoholic. And then he died from yeah, complications of being an alcoholic. <laughs> Yeah, but it was crazy. Yeah. First time I'd ever heard anything like that. He's like, beer. I'm like, no, no beer. That's kind of funny, actually. Well, now, I did send you the pictures from that cemetery here above my house with the the little something in the picture, like, you know, with the, like, something sitting on the uh, grave. Mm -hmm. you I sent think I sent I meant to. If I didn't, I meant to send you a few of them. But you emailed them to me, right? I f yeah, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let me see. I would have had to. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Let me go in here, but, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you sent me some. But I, you know, that's some pictures that I've caught. You know, and I hope I sent a screenshot of the one that was in my last YouTube video that I was telling you, um, Omar Gosh used on his channel, because mm -hmm. that has still got me like my. I don't know. I'm so confused on that. Is that the one with the big yellow circle? No. Okay. No, but that is at the same place. Okay. Now, the, the one with the circle, I don't know if it's just me, but it looks like a woman hunkered down over there to me, like squatted down. Yeah, I see it. 
For sure. And that the the story of that road is, you know, a witch used to live there mm-hmm. and would kidnap local children and bathe in what they call the blood pond. That's mm-hmm. there, the pond. Um, but and this was like way, way, way back. But and I do know that a lot of devil worshippers used to go out there and do things in the woods. Mm-hmm. So that place is really, really creepy. Um, and that was during the day, I think. No, that was no. We went the night before our video and took that picture. That was not during the day, but we did our videos during the day. And I don't know. To me, it looks like, so, you know, to me, a woman with yeah. long hair. So I don't know. I just yeah. It, and I'll put the picture up in the video for people to see it. But it definitely looks like a woman with long dark hair. Mm-hmm. She's giving earthy vibes, but she's not giving like. Uh, I mean, oh, I do have more pictures. <laughs> I found them. Oh, okay. I, girl, I don't know how many I've seen you. And I was like, <laughs> it might be too many, but I just wanted you to see them personally, too. Just to, Yeah. You know. Definitely getting, it's definitely a woman in terms of, I don't think she's like the witch in like the myth or yeah. legend. I think she's just an earthy of that space. Yeah, that was creepy. You know, it, that's weird because it's weird, like, the bad things that I've heard have happened down there and they've done, I never, like, at nighttime, it's a totally different vibe than in the daytime. Mm-hmm. And it's very creepy, but when we did our video in the daytime, we didn't really get, I didn't get too creeped out, and the thing that we caught at, in our video, it, like, I can't believe I didn't pick up on that or feel any kind of way, you know, I mean, I just didn't feel like anything was going to hurt us, but... What that thing, what, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I just can't figure out what it could be. Yeah. You know, because of the way it, the, the, I don't know. It doesn't even look human, really. I don't, I don't know how to explain it other than you just see it. So, but. the one I'm looking at is the one with Mount Pleasant Cemetery, and you have a circle around, like, the tree line. Yeah. Now, that's the cemetery I was just telling you about. Okay. Okay, and, and my friend caught that bit. If you look, it looks like a soldier, maybe a Confederate soldier that we got circled, or what we thought we saw. Okay. Try it's that. very, very faint, but you can almost see, like, the uniform and... Yeah. I mean, we may be, you know, just seeing things, but that's what we thought we saw. Well, because I'm getting dryads in the area, but I'm also trying to hone in... Cause I'm earth energy, so immediately I f- I just see the the earth stuff. Mm-hmm. There's definitely. Were you doing an investigation at that time? Yeah, we were out there using. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So it's kind of like when you do that stuff. Like I was saying, you attract anything within the vicinity. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense that you would pick that kind of stuff up, and you would pick up the female. And, oh, it looks like he has, like, a backpack. Yeah, so you see him, so we're not yeah. crazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's quite a few things going on in this image. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. So I see, well, I see the dryads first, like I was saying. I see him. He, yeah, he's an earth. He didn't cross over. Why didn't he cross over? Oh, has to do with family. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I'm seeing what else I see in this photo. Um, okay. Because um, right now they're kind of coming up to me in shadows. I'm not. Sometimes what happens is when I try to hone in, I'll see them in shadow form, and sometimes they'll get more clear, but sometimes they don't. Okay. I'm seeing him. He's wearing a uniform for sure, but it's very hard to distinguish, like, um, the intricate details. Yeah. It's kind of very blurry for me. Yeah, it, it is kind of fuzzy, but, uh, I mean, just looking at it, that's the only thing we kind of come up with, but yeah, yeah I, I don't, you know, it's, it's weird. Um, but I, cause, I mean, like, the only thing I know about it is it's a... It's an abandoned church and cemetery, and you know it's a um, African American like mm-hmm. cemetery. And there's like some really old, old, old graves, and then it goes into the newer 
but like nobody maintains it. I mean, no, just, I was gonna say there's some um, unmarked graves there too. Like, yeah, those aren't even all of them. There's quite a few that they don't even have like labeled as graves. Yeah, we found some like uh, what looked like the, the I don't know if you, I guess cement or whatever, like in the woods, like in the yeah. wood line, like way out. And I was like, ooh, yeah. So yeah. Was, yeah. Unfortunately, like back in that time, they weren't very nice to yeah. certain kinds of people. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm seeing there's a lot. And I think that's part of the blurriness. And like, because I'm seeing it in my third eye. I'm just using the photo as a way to connect energetically. Yeah. Um, But I think part of the issue is because they're unmarked graves, that might be why they're appearing to me blurry and very like not detailed in terms of who they are because it they kind of have that vibe of oh no one knows we're here no one knows who we are and it's kind of like they have that lack of identity because that's how they feel because they feel right. like they didn't matter to other people and that's crazy because a lot of those heads i mean it is in terrible shape like it is so sad to see yeah. so yeah i bet yeah oh yeah i'm not surprised that you Hot, what you did here and is this the same like wooded area you were talking about like the rituals and stuff no uh -uh, it's two different places okay. the the rituals and the witch is uh, on another just dirt road okay by, and with the pond um but that was at the cemetery and church i found and then the other one with the um like the thing sitting on top of the grave the little child that i sent yeah i think i sent it to you that was at the um cemetery above my house and again, it's like from the 18, a very old, old cemetery. Yeah. So. You know, strangely, I'm not, typically when I get like, when I see cemeteries and things, I'll get a headache because of any negative energies that reside there. But I'm not getting that. And I think it has to do with the trees transmuting that energy, which is cool because I hate getting headaches trying to see oh. what's going on. All right. But that's, okay. that's well, I'm just, glad because I didn't yeah. have any headache. I'm glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, because when I come into contact with like negative energies or like negative entities or spirits, I'll get like a headache, and that kind of lets me know that there's something not so great there. But it looks like the trees in that cemetery are transmuting that energy, so the energy there isn't that bad, and I don't see anything really dark there. I just see a lot of like lost souls. It's more sad than like dark or malevolent. Yeah, cause, I mean, I never really felt anything bad. You know, I've been there yeah. several times and never felt like anything, you know, was like, you know, scary or anything. I'm also seeing in the same picture where you did the circle to the left of this, it's kind of like partially out of the circle. But if you look, a little bit to the left and the high i also see a humanoid like figure but he's mad like he's kind of tall oh well see that's what maybe that's what we caught in our video because the way it i don't i don't know if i sent you the video or or time stamped it for you for you to look at but it was like the way it moved yeah was so quick i don't know i mean the only way you, I, I can't explain it i guess unless you just see it but like yeah the way it looked when i screenshotted it from the video the form it almost looked like it was furry or mm -hmm. like it had fur or something or the only comparison i could compare be like the grinch you know how he's kind of furry and fuzzy yeah it looked similar to that but it i, I don't know i've never seen anything before or since like that and i didn't like i said i did not feel any type of way that day like you know something was there to yeah. hurt us so that that's weird to me so like the phone video um i don't feel like that is a spirit i feel like it's an animal it's giving animal vibes I the furry looking thing yeah yeah but look how do you see how big it well i mean see i don't yeah. know i mean it could be anything i ain't nothing would surprise me mm -hmm. but um i mean, what i'm saying it's just so weird strange looking yeah and as quickly as it moved, like it was zoom, zoom, like that quick. It was so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Know, so that's what I, I don't know. Well, I had a reading with a um a psychic mm -hmm. a medium. It's been years ago. And she told me, she said, Well, you know, you are you, you're a medium or you could be if you would work on your yeah. 
And I don't know about my family. I'm finding out little things here and there that they're telling me now that I, I didn't even know. So mm-hmm. I believe there's something in there in our blood that, because like I'm that way. My nephew that heard the lady screaming, like I think he, he can pick up on things. And he doesn't like to because it scares him. And then my little granddaughter, I know that she's got something. I just, you know, she tells me about stuff all the time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Um, but I, I don't know how to, you know, really go about because I would love to delve yeah. further into it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely see it in your family line. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, um, it's definitely in your family line. And you do have that potential if you wanted to, to yeah. enhance those skills. Um, a lot of times, I mean, for me, I can only really speak for myself because, you know, I know myself and I know like the journey I went through. But for me, just doing the meditations every single day helped tremendously. That's what I want to start doing. I've said I wanted to, but I don't know, like, you know, who to trust or what to see. Yeah. Or, you know, like, cause, I mean, they can say they're doing something good and then put me in a, somewhere bad, you know? I mean, cause people yeah. don't like that. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know. But and it's not only that, I hear talking yeah. a lot. I mean, like, my husband, bless his heart, I lost mm-hmm. my mind few months ago because I was hearing it like but it was mm-hmm. only like when I go in my bathroom yeah. and it was like it was outside and I know there was nobody there every you know and this was continuous and you know I'm like what'd you say and he's like I didn't say anything and this went back and he's like are you okay <laughs> like, yeah, but I really literally hear it. I can't hear what they're saying it's like a bunch of people jumbled up yeah like talking at once but I hear it yeah you know? that would be clear audience and then I you- see you know sometimes at night not so much anymore, but for a while, I'll, I'll see flashes of light. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been like little like police lights outside my window before because I'd see so many like blue lights yeah. in my bedroom. You know, and I think maybe I am going crazy because I don't. No. You know. Now you you are definitely clear audience, clear sentient, and I wouldn't be surprised if you have some clairvoyance mixed in there. Um, those lights, um, you know, my friend and co-host with the Lights Midnight podcast, she sees orbs all the time. And a lot of times they're like pinpoint lights that she'll just see randomly. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see them as much as she does. Oh, and there go my police sirens. <laughs> oh, no, that's crazy. Well, he's like, you know, that's what it would look like. Like sometimes, most of the time I've seen them, they were real quick. Like it looked like a blue. Yeah. And then I've seen, like, little smaller ones that, like, gold, even. Like, a gold color. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good, because gold I, is... Yeah, I, I think <laughs> my mom and dad come to visit me a lot here, I, I think. Oh, that, for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. And I feel like that's them. Yeah, because when you have gold lights like that, they're of benevolence. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure okay. you're right. That would make sense, too. Yeah, it's always in my room, and you know, and I swear I had a conversation with my mom, mm-hmm. her flickering in the bathroom light one night, and I mean, I, I know, I know, you know, who I was talking to, and it was just and my husband, he was, he, he's, this is not his thing at all, he mm-hmm. does not enjoy this at all, so it kind of freaks him out, but I mean, I was just caring, and it was crazy how she would answer, I don't know, but I just feel like it was her, I know it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I'm definitely getting the vibe that they do visit you. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if I can pick anything else up. And I wanted to tell you in a minute um, about this place, too. Yeah. Um, I'm, mm, I keep seeing you laying in bed. Are you noticing stuff when you're laying in your bed? Yes, that's when I see the flashing lights. And stuff. Oh, okay, okay. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's your, yeah, that's your mom. And yeah, you're I figured in- it would. Yeah, because I can't, it's like, I try to go to sleep, but it's like, I mean, even through my eyelids, I can see the flashes, like, my eyes are closed. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's your mom. And then, let me see, what else? I'm seeing someone with dark hair, and it's, like, very thick and wavy, almost curly. Female. A female? Yeah. She keeps... They keep using my Nana as reference. So maybe it's like a grandmother thing? No, no. no, My mom had. Oh, maybe it could be. Well, they called her Nana. So that's what my kids called my mom, Nana. Okay. Yeah. That's that's what we called. Yep. Okay. 
And that's why I'm thinking, well, maybe it's, yeah, because my mom was, you know, she had, well, <laughs> she had, she changed hair color like, like I do, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, but her natural hair color was brown and, and it was a little, you know, she kept perms and curls in it. So yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. Could be. Yeah. Cause they kept showing yeah. my grandmother and we called her Nana. <laughs> That's crazy. So, yeah, yeah, okay. That's why I was thinking grandmother, but no, we called her Nana. That's so weird. It is. Okay, yep, so that is her. That is her. Yeah. Getting Aww. chills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's her. Oh. Well, let me, do you know anything about, like, birds? What birds? I know they're supposed to be spiritual meanings, and I looked them up, but it, they had different meanings, you know, different mm-hmm. things. But I, I had, it was for, like, every week for uh, probably about two months ago and at least once a week for a couple of weeks two little sparrows would come in my house and uh, they had to be coming in through the doggy door oh, and they okay. would be all over my house and they would hang out in my and my dogs would chase back and forth back and forth and then they'd leave or my dogs would get them but it was like every day i mean every week and i was thinking was that my mom and dad trying to just say hey you know we're here or what because it was weird that they would be two at a time yeah Little and it's interesting too because like with my family when we say someone's we always for whatever reason we had these two pets at least i when i was growing up we had these two dogs and when the one passed away we would say oh it's because they would come in the form of a cardinal and that yeah. would be our dog um but in terms of like giving birds like meanings and things, I always just Googled it. Yeah, but... I did too, but it was it was a couple of I mean, most of them were kind of similar. It was nothing bad, thank God. No. But a couple of them were just different. And I'm like, well and I never really I, Cardinals was my thing. I always heard, you know, that's how you know. Yeah. You know yeah. what people say. So these little birds were just little brown, like little sparrow things. Yeah. If your parents did your parents ever eat a little bit of that, how am I gonna phrase this? Your parents, they didn't split up at all, right? No. Mm-mm. Okay, yeah, then that, that makes sense. That's, yeah. Sometimes our loved ones come in forms of birds. And the fact that they came in together, I would agree. That yeah. it's like they're checking in. Yeah, it was just crazy. I mean, it was like just like one week after another. I'm like, this is insane. It's crazy. But yeah, that's what I was wondering. And it's funny because my mom... There was this song out years and years and years ago, and it was called like Two Sparrows in a Hurricane. And my mama loved that song. Oh, yeah. There's and so validation. when I saw those, I'm like, that's got to be. It has to be. Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the validation right there. I just got to yeah. again. Yeah, I did too that time. <laughs> I was like, yep. Yeah, all right, mom. Spirit keeps bringing me to your kitchen. What is going on with your kitchen? Like Where I am now? Is that where you are right now? Yeah. Oh yeah, spirit keeps bringing me to your kitchen though. But there, well, you know, this is, I got a story about this place too. We bought this place from my husband's uncle. Okay. Now he bought it from somebody. He was going to you know re, re um, renovate it and move in. Well, he got down in his health; he couldn't do it, so we bought it, and we were going to rent it out. And I said, "Well, no, we're just going to why don't we just live in it? We're looking for another place." So we got in here, remodeled every like everything, gutted it, it just totally remodeled it. And so after we got every, well, even during the process of, you know, remodeling, I was taking before and afters to show my dad and everything because he was still alive at the time. And I'll have to show you a picture of that. But anyway, I caught something really weird in the photo I took because it wasn't there on my table when I took the picture. But anyway, so as, as time started going on, we got my little dog and she would look at the corner, one corner in the living room and she would bark every night. And it was about the same time. And I'm thinking, that's a little weird, you know, like what's, going on so then we could be in the bedroom and even his uncle and aunt was here one day and you could hear the old style like um excuse me i drink off the pepper um the light switches when you turn them on and off and they make that click yeah that's what we had at the time well we could hear that and then we heard like the front door open and we've heard you know stuff like and i've seen when i've been in my bathroom because it faces like the mirror is here and it faces i see the kitchen and I swear I see shadows or have seen a shadow behind me, you know, in the mirror before. And I thought maybe my husband had come home. But other than that, I don't really know. Like, yeah, there's something really I'm seeing something in your kitchen. Well, the room I'm in now, which is my little office, um, yeah. I wouldn't come in here. When we first moved in here, 
it gave me the creepiest. I would not come in this room. Like we use it as storage. I'm like, I'm not going in that room. There's just something's not right in there. And so the one time that I did come in here, my husband was gone. I fell through the freaking floor. My leg went slap through the floor. Oh. And I'm in here trying to figure out how to get out of it because we were working on everything. Well, I got out of that and I'm like, no, I knew not to come in this room. I'm like, no. And then like one day me and my little dog was sitting on the couch and I kept the door closed. I wouldn't even leave the door open. And I heard like a, a bump, like something was behind the door. She looked at me and I looked at her and I'm like, yeah, Gracie, I, I heard that. And then she looks at the door like this and then she like follows something like that comes up. I'm like, oh no. So finally I did a salt cleanse with a, a vase of water and salt and sat it out, you know, in this room, like 24 hours, they say to check it. And if nothing happens, anyway, the next day, it was one night, 24 hours, the entire vase that I put in here was nothing but one big crystal. Oh. And since I did that, I have not felt, I, mean, I this. I stay in this room all the time. I've had no bad vibes, no bad feelings, but we did find out that the lady that owned it died in this yeah, place. Yeah, I was just yeah. about to we get didn't know. there. <laughs> His uncle didn't bother to tell us that part until we, at, way after. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Um, well, then maybe you can help me with this. Yep. <laughs> now, this was like, we'd been here probably a good year or so. And I had went and got a bedroom suit from my aunt, which had belonged to my grandmother. Um, So it was empty. She emptied everything out, you know, and I, I put my things in it when I got home. Well, well about a week after I had it, I was looking in my top drawer with my bras and stuff, and I seen this little bag, like a grocery bag, one of the little mini ones. I thought, what in the world? I didn't, I didn't put that in there. Well, I pulled it out, and there were three silk, well, three scarves, like old ladies would wear, and like tie on their head. Yeah. And my grandmother would wear those on Fridays when she'd go get her hair done. And I thought, well, maybe they're, they just were stuck somewhere. I took pictures of them and sent them to both of my aunts. And I said, are these mamas? And they're like, no, we've never seen those before in our life. And I'm like, are y'all just kidding me? Or what? They said, no, I promise you those, you know, we don't know where they came from. So I'm like, well, where in the world? And then my husband was like, maybe the old lady gave it to you. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, so I don't know. And to this day, they're put up in a closet. I still have them. I just, I put them up. I don't know where they came from. Yeah, they were stuck in the, um, is it wood? Like that thing that they're, yeah. Because Spirit's showing me like, it get it got stuck on the inside and it's like if they didn't like a, it's a, to me that's what i think too it, it could have been like on the top part or something because I, I yeah don't especially if they don't treat the wood properly and it's like um rough like sandpaper there's a little splinters things get caught and that's yeah, what yeah, i'm saying because it's old it was my grandmother's bedroom set that she slept in you know for years and i just didn't want to get rid of it so i brought it home yeah um that lady is still there and you mean like now yeah hmm. See, I don't, well it's funny you talk about the kitchen because my little grandson that comes here to spend the night with us he'll stay in, like my door's right over here and it goes into yeah. the living room and he'll start crying sometimes he'll get in there and he'll look and he'll cry so i think he's seeing something but it's always in there toward the kitchen area yeah it's still there and Still getting chills. I'm getting a tinge of like it's not a headache, but it's kind of like that pre-headache vibe. Mm -hmm. There's something there. Definitely that that lady. She's earthbound there, but she's not. She's more on the neutral side. She's not like negative per se, but because she is an earthbound spirit, she needs to get her energy still from the living. And so, you know, because spirits that don't cross, uh, how do I phrase it? Typically, those that are earthbound typically don't look appealing and can be very scary to especially children. But I also feel like there's something else there other than her. It's given thought form vibes as well. See, that's what I was wondering because the, the vibes that I would get out of this, and I thought maybe this was the room she had died in or something. Mm. But once I did that salt cleanse, I, I mean, I, it, I've not had that feeling ever again. And I do cleanse pretty regular, you know, just watching YouTube videos and stuff. But I don't know. It, it just, I don't know. It, it's just weird to me. To ugh. I it was think... Just I think she's there, and that's why I'm getting that, like, tinge. Especially if they haven't crossed over. 
sometimes, you know, just a regular cleansing isn't going to help cross over or kick out like earthbound spirits, especially if they're stubborn. Um, but it doesn't feel that bad. It doesn't feel that bad at all. It just, I just know there's something there, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, and I, it, it, I feel it. Picture, I don't know if I sent you the picture, but what I was telling you, there was something in the photo sitting on my coffee table. If I didn't send it to you, I will send it to you later just to show you so you can see it. But, like, there's something there that shouldn't be there. And then it's weird, too, because if you, I had a glass coffee table. Yeah. And if you zoom in on that coffee table, there's a, like, there's a face of an old woman wearing glasses in that photo. Is it this one? Oh, I don't know if you can see it with the ring. No, that was at the haunted school we went to. Oh, okay. Because I'm trying yeah. to find a picture. I don't think um, I, I, I have I, this one, too. Let's see if it comes That up. was at the school, too. Okay. I haven't even told you that story yet. That was <laughs> wild. That's where my husband had an experience at. And mm. yeah, he, he, he was like, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> Bless his heart. He'll go with me, but he doesn't like it. That's how my husband is too. Yeah, it's crazy. In terms uh -huh. of... In terms of your cleansing, what are you doing? Because I just I just want to know, maybe we can make it a little stronger. Okay. Well, I mean, I have incense. Um, co is it copal? C-O-P-A-L? Yep. Copal, I use yep. that. And then I use um, dragon's blood, sage. Mm -hmm. And then I also have palo, santo, uh, incense, and wood sticks that I use. Oh, and I just good. use different ones, you know, whenever I feel like I need to use one. Yeah, those are actually, those are really good, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I do it about, one, well, it depends on, you know, like, especially when I watch certain videos on, t yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just get the sense to you know, but I haven't felt any, like, I don't know, that's what's weird to me, like, I haven't felt anything, you know? Yeah, it's, things. I don't get anything evil, it's just like. That earthy is there. And because she's yeah. not crossed over, that's why I'm getting like that pre headache. It's not a headache, but it's like that pre. So she just, we can work together and cross her over. But okay. like. Can I show you something? I have to get up and get it. But now this could be what I may have brought something in. <laughs> can yeah. I show you something real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just right over here. Let me grab it. It's, real, it's really quick. I meant to get it before we started and I forgot. But, um, Oh, <laughs> I think he's adorable. <laughs> oh but, my god! And I never felt like I don't know. But then I'm kind of like, hmm. Sometimes I'm kind of thinking maybe, and I haven't because I haven't tried to do. I haven't tried to do anything just in case there was, you know, like talk to it or anything. Mm. But I've already brought it in. If you know what I'm saying. But I think he's cute. He's spooky, but he's cute. He's spooky. I don't think there's anything attached to it. Good. And plus, with your cleansing routine, it's really yeah. good. Like, Copal is what I would use for, like, the sh like the more stubborn things. But I would add frankincense to the Copal. Okay. I mean, that's the only thing you really... I mean, you're doing such a good job already. Well, I have myrrh, too. But I don't like that. To me, that seems like it doesn't... It was incense. But yeah. it seems like they don't burn as good. I don't know. I'm not crazy about those. And I've heard those were good. But I don't... For really like them too much myrrh is really like ter in terms of smell that's really strong yeah but um myrrh i don't if mm -hmm. you're using copal and you have palo santo and sage i would honestly add the frankincense with the copal and you okay. can literally burn those two together and then like for things that aren't as like heavy or crazy you can do the sage and palo santo because the sage and palo santo is kind of like your your basic cleanse and then if you want to step it up you can go to the copal and frankincense okay but i don't think that doll's haunted okay good. and if it if it was it's gone because okay. of your cleansing routine yeah well where it came from it probably could have been but see too i have crystals all over my room yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a crystal freak, too. So, um, And I used to use white sage. And then I started hearing, oh, no, that brings things in. 
Uh, so then I started doing a little research to see, well, what can I use in dragon's blood? So I, that's all I get now as far as the sage. So white sage, when you use it by itself, and this is includes um, white sage or any kind of sage. If you just use white sage or any sage by itself, all that does is puts a void in the energy and takes out whatever's in the space. But if you don't use anything to insert positive energy, that's where you're going to have a problem because yes, yeah, anything can fill that void up. So that's why a lot of people have issues when they just use sage by itself. That's why you need to use the Palo Santo with it because it inserts the positive energy. So it's not the white sage. It's just they're not using it properly. So okay. and I never did, you know, I don't even think about burning stuff together either. I was just like use one, you know, I didn't. Yeah. But I do. I like the dragon's blood a lot, though. It, it works. Seems to work really good. Yeah, dragon's, dragon's blood's pretty good. Um, It's pretty decent for, like, I would say for basic and a little bit more stubborn things. I've used dragon blood when I had my haunting, and I will say it does not help you with demonic haunting. So for anyone who's curious, dragon's blood by itself, mm, doesn't quite work but if you add other things to it yes it'll work well, thankfully i haven't had i don't think i've had anything um demonic but nah. the school and this was the very first like ghost hunt or anything i'd ever done ever and uh this was back in 2019 like as far as like an actual go to a place like that and there was um a bunch of people there like there were paranormal teams there and it was uh, gonna be um some psychics were there and they were doing, they were filming their TV show there that night. So I ended up meeting the two psychics, talking to them and they were super nice. And one of them came to, up to me. She said, look, I hate to ask you this. She goes, but what kind of protection do y'all have? And I said, well, I've got black tourmaline in my bra. He's got one in his pocket. Cause I always wear crystals when we go places, you know? And she goes, okay, well, that's really good. She goes, but I need y'all to, if you can, just, you know, picture like a white light, you know, of protection. She said, I know y'all's intentions are good. She said, but tonight there's people here that their intentions are not good. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, no. And she goes, so, and she went into a little bit. She goes, all I can tell you right now is there's going to be a big fight start. And it's going to escalate from there. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, thanks for the warning, you know. Um, we went on, you know, just kind of split on our way. And we had the camera taking those pictures. And that little girl looking thing with the glowing eyes we caught yeah. that and the other we caught several things like that but they were like shadowy type yeah you know, those foggy looking things um and then the story to the school which i don't really know the whole story but what i do know is it used to be a school years and years and years ago and apparently um the children i don't know if it was like a group home school or just a school but apparently children that were there were getting sick mm -hmm. and they would put them in the basement to quarantine them Ooh, and it turned out they were being poisoned is what the story we were told oh um we went down in the basement that night and there were some of those beds still down there mm -hmm. girl i got sick it must i had to get out of, i could not be in that basement like that's probably one of the worst like i oh God, just to look at that oh it was awful thinking about you know they were original beds yeah and, uh, i'm also getting vibes of abuse too really yeah well see that's where i'm wondering because the man that had lived there at this time that he just died he had made the house his home and they had a bunch of like and this was weird soundproof rooms i thought it was a little weird to me mm -hmm. but this man made puppets like muppet puppets Ew. and all of his stuff was still there like all of their furniture i mean everything was still in this place yeah, and it was yeah. the weirdest but that what happened that's what happened to my husband we were um you know we were getting just walking around doing this and that and we go in this room and there was a bed and it when i shined my light on it it looked like blood stains yeah well there's all this stuff all of a sudden i got a feeling like something was under that bed like it was gonna come out and there was a girl next to me and i started backing up a little bit she goes are you all right and i'm like yeah, you know, I just feel like, you know, something's under there. She goes, I kind of got a weird vibe, too. Well, I did not know where my husband was at that time. But when I turned around, he was behind me with the camera taking pictures under the bed. Hmm. So I thought that was a little bit weird. So I go out, and I'm talking to the psychics again. He's still wandering around the room. All of a sudden, he comes to the door. 
he looks at me he goes we need to go now and yeah, he's yeah. never told me and i'm like i didn't question it i said okay we'll go um but he said well, he got in there and he said he felt like something had sat on his chest and was like pushing on him yeah and so we did leave that night and and of course it, the fight did happen the the girl that was hosting the uh, the ghost hunt her and her husband got into a screaming fight you know before all that happened and i'm like yeah we don't need to know what happened so we, we didn't even stick around for the whole thing but yeah it's dark it's it, it yeah it seemed like it probably was it because uh, like that... i think I, I don't mean to interrupt you but i think i saw something see i was gonna try to be like billy badass and there was this room totally pitch black and i wanted to go in there by myself to see if, i just wanted to try it to see if i'm brave enough to do it well, as I walk in that door, and I'll tell you, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face, but I swear I saw something looking back at me. like, And I didn't even go all the way in the room. I stepped inside the door, the threshold, and I saw something looking at me, and girl, I left. <laughs> so, I don't know. I didn't know. I wasn't brave. Not that night. Uh, so, I don't know, but it was really weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah. yeah, there's definitely <laughs> abuse there. There's definitely negative entities there. <sighs> I'm getting collector vibes, which, you know, collectors yeah, collect the spirits and souls from those and prevents them from crossing over. Well, the guy that, that owned the place, he was, re he was wanting to, I don't know what he's going to do with it. I don't even know if it's still, you know, what it is now. This was in 2019. Um, that he said there was a rocking horse that was there and that he couldn't keep his workers because they would freak out because this thing would move yeah like different rooms and i saw the thing i got down to it i looked into his eyes because i wanted to see mm -hmm. and the feeling i got from that was horrible like i immediately i was like no i i even i didn't even go look explore further down the hall because that scared me yeah there so there are children there that did not cross over and it's part of the collector but there's also a man there he was giving really descended vibes. Like, it's an earthbound spirit, but he's descended as in he's very low in vibration. And do we know or do you know if a man, like an adult man, like died there? Yes. The man that did made the puppets. Oh, from okay. What I, from what I understand, he did die there and they had his funeral there. Cause his funeral wreath was in the freaking bathroom. Um, I've got pictures of it, and yeah, and I mean the the Muppet things that he had left that was still there. I mean I don't know where the wife and kids went, but all their stuff was still there. And but those puppets or what they were the they didn't look good, you know, yeah. weird. Um, and the weird thing about it was, and my husband freaked out on this. Later on, we were able to watch the TV show that the psychics filmed. Mm -hmm. And every time that we'd go somewhere, I'd, I'd tell him what I felt. I'm like, I feel this. And I, do you know that we watched that show and every spot that I said something about being there, they picked it. They said the same thing. They yeah, would almost okay. use the same words that I said. And one of those is one of the mediums that I had a reading with later on that was telling me about me having abilities. Yeah. But I thought yeah. that was really crazy. But yeah, that place was crazy, girl. It just... I'm wondering, and I'm not accusing because obviously innocent until proven guilty, but I wonder if he was doing some bad things with That's those what I'm... children That's and he's the descended. Why else would you need soundproof rooms? You know? Yeah, exactly. Definitely. I seen a picture of him. I, I looked him up till I went, and he is a weird looking dude for sure. Yeah. yeah so I, That's probably quite possible. I would say. Yeah, it's it's not looking good. There's absolutely some thought forms there that are it's I'm seeing one just within the picture you sent me with the glowing eyes. Mm -hmm. um, that was crazy. There's two, I see two in there. Hold on. Three. Ooh. There's probably more than three thought form things in there. Mm. It's, it's like the energy from those children and the bad things going on and then the death it created this weird looking <sighs> when i get into the um editing of this video i will circle in the photo where i see it 
or see them. And I'll try to like outline it a little bit to show you what I'm seeing. But um, yeah, there's definitely some, yeah, there's quite a few human spirits in there, thought form spirits. And there's a, I feel like there's, but the problem is, I don't know if the man is the collector or if he's working with the collector, but there is a collector in there. And I sometimes they are very like shifty and sly and because they can shape shift, it's hard mm -hmm. to distinguish if it's the person I'm seeing that's the shape shifter or if they're two separate. But I'm no noticing like a correlation between collectors having assistance from descended earthbound spirits. Well, it's, you know, you say that one of the girls, one of the psychics was just beginning her you yeah. know, journey. And there was something there that I saw her go into a room with the other lady. And I heard the other lady say, look, don't be scared of him, you know, show authority. So there was something there that was really freaking her out Yeah. in one of those rooms. So what you're talking, and that might be, I mean, I don't know if it was the man either, but that's weird that you'd say that. And then she was kind of wigged out by. I think they're two separate and I think they're working okay. together, honestly. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the vibe. It's 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 like he's the 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 descended earthbound spirit is giving like the person that corrals. It's kind of like you have a sheepdog that corrals the sheep, but then you have the person in charge. And he's giving me like the corral vibes. Like he keeps them either like busy or in one place and then the main honcho dude which would be the collector is the one that's like feeding off of them and doing whatever he does so two more things about that place real quick um when we got there the basement was sealed off like mm -hmm. they had wood it you know sealed off for, well the men of the paranormal teams and a couple other men got said they wanted to go they wanted to break the seal and let uh, you know take it all down so they did and my husband helped them and like took down the the barrier that was like sealing it in and i kid you not when they pulled that and it may have just been because it was a basement and broken windows but there was a swoosh of wind that like came up the stairs so i don't know if they let maybe i mean i was wondering like why would it be sealed up but who knows you know i thought that was a little weird and then as we were getting ready to leave the two ladies psychics like right there and they were talking and she, the, the one lady looks at the younger girl she goes do you see him well, girl, I'm no, you know, I was trying to look down the hall. I didn't see anybody. I did, but when she held her cell phone up to take a picture, I looked in her cell phone and I could see him then. And there was a man at the end of the hall. But we left, you know, because my husband got wigged out. So we, <laughs> yeah, he was, he's like, no, we, we got to go now. <laughs> but, uh, and I said, that's crazy. Yeah, that is a very dark location. And I can understand his reaction. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about trying to, I want to go back and see if he ever did anything with the place or if he would let people, I'd love to go back, I think. <laughs> I think I'd like to, yeah. but I, I got to find the guy, I think I found him, but I'm not sure if it's the right person. And the lady that did the ghost hunt, even though it's been all these years, she won't give me any information. Oh, I don't know, I forgot, I'm like, you know. Mm -hmm. She was weird anyway, but yeah, I'd like to know if he was ever able to, because he didn't do it either. He said, you know, I'm leaving this place open for y'all when y'all were done. Yeah. I'll come lock it up because he was not about that spooky stuff mm -hmm. either. Hmm. You know, but there was definitely a vibe. Yeah. Let's see. Do you, you have any, like, questions you would like to ask? Um, and this could be about any kind of paranormal situations you've experienced, advice, etc. Now, you know, I told you my parents have passed and... Hmm. This was a whole year after my dad passed, but we were down at the house because my nephew lives there now. He got the house. Um, so he was taking care of my daddy. And so my nephew was outside smoking and my husband was under the kitchen sink working on the plumbing and I'm just standing there in the kitchen and I heard the door, the front door open. And I thought it was my nephew coming back in. Well, I looked into the living room. Girl, I saw my daddy standing there. I saw him as if he, before he ever got sick, I saw him as a whole person. Mm -hmm. You know, I could tell you what he was wearing, and he looked at me like he always did, and then he just turned and walked toward his <laughs> room. But I know that I saw him. Yeah. I mean, I know I did. Nobody else saw him. Everybody's like, <laughs> but I, but I, instead of seeing him like a, I mean, I, like full form, like a human form. Yeah, that's because he's in the light. He's crossed over, so you're gonna see him like in a good, like light. It was so cool because it was just like before he was ever sick, and I was like, wow. 
Mm-hmm. But he didn't say anything, but he looked at me. And I've had, you know, my K2 meter, I've got a bag of their jewelry. Uh-huh. And I, I laid my K2 meter on it one night and I just sat here and filmed it and it was lighting up like a Christmas tree, you know? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. But, um, um, oh, okay. One more thing. This, I just, just popped into my head. Now, this was when we first moved in here too. Um, and this was after I did the cleanse thing. Yeah. But we had one of these old school t- big screen TVs with the wheels, like, you know, it was an old TV, but we kept it in the bedroom. And I don't know if you ever heard, heard the movie Sinister. Or if yes, seen I, I see it advertised a lot on, I don't know if it's Netflix or um, what's the other one? It's like Amazon Prime. I see yeah, it. I, I wished I had never seen it because that made me mess with my head for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I mean, no joke, it freaked me slap out. So I finally get past it, not think about it all the time. There's a part two that come out. Oh. So we're in the bedroom one day and I'm scrolling through and I'm like, I'm just going to click on it and just watch just a couple of minutes of it just to see if it's as bad as the first one. Well, a couple of minutes turned into the whole darn thing. And I was like, yeah, this was stupid. I mean, I screamed one time my husband and dog about jumped off the bed. It was just horrible. And so we left that night, went to a friend's house, came home. Well, I'm turning the bed down, getting ready for bed. And he's in the bathroom and the TV's off. And I noticed in the corner of the TV was something like peeking out. And it was that demon thing from the first sinister, like you could tell. And I said, babe, do you see that? He said, what the is that? We wheeled that TV out the front door and into the yard. He took it off the next day. <laughs> and I've never seen anything like that before. But that was really weird. Like, have you heard anything like that happening? Yeah. Or, really? Yeah, it's, it's kind of common when you have people that are sensitive. Like they can watch a movie or... Um, or an investigation or like ghost hunters or zach bagel bites whatever the heck his name is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah sometimes it's common especially like if you're watching a movie based off a real entity or the set that they filmed on was haunted um or because sometimes you have people like producers that'll make a movie and they'll be getting their ideas from like their attachment or their haunting and they might not even know. So the entity, you know, could legitimately exist. But then you also have the thing too, where even if it doesn't exist, it's, it's, you can create a thought form accidentally and not even realize it. And see, I didn't know if the name of him and what he was about is an actual Demon. I mean, I didn't research it. I, you know, I don't like yeah. to look at like research stuff like that just for yeah. that reason. I don't want to. I'll but, uh, His <laughs> name was well. I know the name was Bagul Bagul, and they called him Mister Boogie in the movie. But he was supposed to be the the eater of children. Okay, that's what his name was referenced in the movie. And I don't usually have, movies don't usually bother me like that. But that one really just did something to me. Like it was just. You know, I guess because of being children in it probably had a lot to do with it, but. Oh, is that the one with the projector? He watches yes. the film. Okay. Yes. Yeah. If it's based off a real entity. Yeah. Then problem. Okay. Yeah. That's why you saw it. It is based off real entities. Really? Yep. So, yeah. That's why you're going to be more likely to see. Um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, and you're sensitive. So it's kind of like when you watch stuff like that and they're based off of real entities or you're watching, like, investigators do their little investigations. Um, it's like when you watch it, you can create a line or a chord or however you want to say it, like a direct line from you to the entity and... A lot of the times it has to do with your needing that vibration subconsciously and you don't know it. And that's why it creates like that path for them to come back and forth to you. So yeah, that's what happened. Okay. So ha- do you want to share like your socials? If, cause Pete, I mean, if you don't want to. I mean, it's fine. We can. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, you see my YouTube is uh, from the realms with Jen and Shauna. Okay. Um, and that's the Facebook page, too. I mean, so that's, you know, and like I said, she and I don't, I haven't even talked to her in a while. You know, she lives in one state. I live, it's hard to even do anything. So it's been a while since we posted, but that's where, you know. Yeah. 
we got a page in in YouTube. So okay, yeah, I just thought like if you wanted no, I mean, to that's share, cool. it, you could. it's fine. You know, that's that's no problem. And then, so yeah, that was a lot of information, a lot of interesting stories. And I enjoyed listening to all of them. And I like being able to, t like, also as practice to do it like a channel live time when, you know, just when we're talking and stuff. Yeah. So it actually helps me, like, with that. Because a lot of times I'll do my channeling first and then I'll make the video because I don't want there to be space of, like, silence. Because, you know, I'll put the blindfold on and I'll just be sitting there taking notes. And I don't know. People say they want to see me channel, like, in the video. But yeah. I feel like people will get very bored. But then, you know, with this... um you know, like our little interview conversation thing. They get to see a little bit of that. So. Yeah, and that, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I've not ever done the, the mm -hmm. you know, try to, ch or the what they call the Estes method. Is I want to yeah. try. Yeah. I've never, never tried it. So that, I'm a little, because it seems a little scary. I mean, really, that seems a little freaky to me, but I would still like to do it. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Um, I think it would be confusing for me just because I'll be hearing something in one side, like spirit talking to me versus like with the headphones and then like the spirit box. But I think it's cool. I think you'd be okay with that. Like, I feel like it'd yeah. be fine. As long as you don't so. have that fear, you're fine. Yeah. I mean, usually I'm not. It's just, you know, I guess what's really got me for is the paranormal files. I don't know if you've ever seen that channel. Um, I love that channel too, but when he goes, they do those, they, they get a lot of dark yeah. stuff that comes through. And that's why I'm like, yeah. That's because of his vibration and where he's at because he's got his own attachment. And so he's going to be more likely to attract dark things. But yeah, I just want to thank you so much for getting on here with me. Um, it was really fun, honestly. It was fun. I love, like I said, I love having somebody to talk about it that knows what yeah. I'm talking about, he gets it, you know, like, because, like I said, my poor husband, bless his heart, he loves me, and he'll go with me wherever I want to go, but he's just not happening. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I love it, but I appreciate you letting me do it, because, yeah. now I could talk all night about it, because I've got <laughs> stories and pictures and videos. <laughs> yeah, and I'll put some of those pictures in the video as well, so people can see it better. And, yeah, I just want to thank you for coming on. Like, I had a great time. I love swapping stories back and forth. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and if you have any questions, like, after the video, you can always text me through, well, you have my phone number, mm -hmm. or you can DM me on Instagram, whichever works for you. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so we'll cut the um, interview here. Just stay on, because I still wanted to talk to you about that thing. But in terms for the video, I just want to say thank you guys for sticking around and watching, and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.